um, my name is Yemi, and uh, this is Russ. And we both own the Wild Goose Meeting House and Good Neighbors Meeting House. And um, yeah, it's been, an in, it's been a fun journey. So we're going to start off by telling you a little bit about our individual stories. So I moved to Colorado Springs um, seven years, eight years ago. I don't remember now. But I originally moved here, actually, to start a church. And um, moved there and then quickly realizing that what it meant meant to be a person, actually a faith in the city. Um, Genesis um, speaks about uh, kind of our original purpose, and that's to create culture. God told Adam, you make something of the world, create culture. So I realized spirituality is not just about a Sunday g gathering, but it's actually what you did and how, what a difference you made in the city. So I began to imagine what would it look like to... To, um, to meet a need. And the need in our city at the time was the lack of cultural places, uh, spaces to hang out. Because a lot of the young people that I was with we were, talked about how lame our city was and they wanted to move to Boulder and Austin and yada yada and, and said, why don't we do something about it? So that's what got me going about thinking of a, a place uh, for the community to gather, whether it's over coffee, beer, or something of that nature. And then um, had a couple of friends that actually introduced me to Russ. They kept saying, hey, there's this guy named Russ, and you guys actually speak in the same language. You guys got to meet. That happened for about a good two to three months, and then I stumbled uh, upon Russ actually at another coffee shop, is where we uh, stir. Um, he was meeting with one of the guys that was um, trying to connect the two of us together. So I reached out to Russ later that week, and we, we met again at Stir Coffee Shop, and uh, I remember the one-hour conversation ended up becoming a couple of hours. And then we realized, hey, we got something here. And then four months later, the goose was open. Now, that's a whole different story, a whole different talk about the power of partnerships. But I'll stop there. Okay. Cool. I got a little teary there for a minute. <laughs> Whew. It's good stuff. Um, yeah, so uh, I think the convergence for Yimmy and I was um, really kind of magical. Um, it was clearly, you know, meant to be, whatever that means to you. Um, and we both, interestingly enough, have sort of these church backgrounds, which, you know, causes all kinds of buzz about town as the Wild Goose or Christian Coffee Shop. It's not, whatever that even means. Um, but... Uh, um, you know, we, we have a lot of community development and spirituality in our backgrounds. Um, I think for Yemi, I think I can echo the, the, the same thing regarding the importance of community and culture and how that matters. Um, and that, that's, there's a real similarity between sort of our past work in the, in the religious sector and um, our work now. A lot of the same passions, a lot of the same gifts. Um, for me, it was time to transition because no church would let me work for them anymore. That's a whole other story. Um, but uh, that's not true, but it, it, exactly. It's, well, yeah, it's sort of this. <laughs> um, anyway, that's, that's for over a beer if anybody wants to hear more. Um, <clears throat> but um, but the, the, the bottom line is it, it's really true and remarkable. We had mutual friends that recognized we had a lot of the same passion. And, um, and, and we were both serious about uh, going in this direction. And so we took on this thing we'd never done before together. And part, again, as Yimmy said, it's a, the talk about partnership is another thing that we may do a little bit later, but um, in just a few minutes. But um, partnership is hard, it's vibrant, it's dynamic, it's vital, it's important. No, absolutely no way um, that I could have done this without Yimmy. I think he would say the same thing. Um, we need what each other bring to the table. And, um, and so really glad to, to be here at, at, on this journey in my life, so. So we call it the Wild Goose Meeting House, or Good Neighbors Meeting House. So we would say we're in the business of creating meeting house, houses, and it's just a sexy way of saying a public house. So that's our, Russ and my new way of retelling the story of what it means to have a public house in your community. Um, many of us, uh, know it uh, today as pub houses, but the original pub houses were actually public houses. Um, if you go way back in, um, in time in Ireland and England 
and some of the European nations, um, public houses were the center places of community. Actually, if you go way back into the Roman era, you had the dwellings, the homes, and then a public house was formed because it was a place where a neutral ground where the community gathered over great food and great beverages. And so what we do is um, to reestablish that idea in our own local community, and we call ourselves meeting houses. Um, yeah, it's, it's really an interesting thing. I mean, when you think about, when you, when you hear the word pub, you know, you think about that classic sort of Irish pub or whatever, and it's for the people in the community came together. Um, it is short for public house, and that's what we wanted to create. We wanted to have, but here, you have to contextualize for your culture. It makes perfect sense that in Colorado Springs in America in 2017 and 2013 when we opened the Goose originally, um, that the way to do a, a true public house is, sure, it's cool to have beer and wine, but you gotta have coffee. You know, that has to be, that, that's where we gather here in the Springs, right? Along with, with, with the other. Um, so this model, uh, this product, uh, cluster, this model of great coffee, you know, we always said, talk about craft beverages, we, we build community around great food and beverages, and we're talking about, you know, um, single origin, great third wave coffee, traditional espresso, good wine and beer, local emphasis, you know, now the goose started without cocktails, but now we have cocktails there, and of course the new place does too, um, and as Yimmy mentioned, Rebecca's doing a great job um, heading up that program at both places. And, um, but that's the reason we do those things. Um, we do those things to gather and create that kind of space. And we think this model is what that looks like here in our context. And even in the more micro context of the wild goose versus good neighbors, how many of you have been to both places already? You, you can, wow, that's awesome. Um, so, you know, you know what I'm talking about when I say there's a there's some profound core similarities. There are also some very obvious differences, and that's because we are contextualized to that neighborhood. And even though it is, as I found out this morning, by the way, this is exciting. Total aside, um, yesterday was my first day back on my bicycle. For, for since like you know two months before we opened because I'm in my truck every day because I'm hauling stuff and having to run to the grocery store and yesterday yesterday I was like I think I can do it I think I can ride the bike today and and today I did it again like I lost half the summer and it's so exciting I feel like I'm my, my life is getting back to normal um but I mentioned that to say that it's a four minute bike ride from good neighbors to wild goose at least at my pace and um and i thought it would be longer than that it was really exciting i thought it was going to be late for a meeting yesterday going between the two i'm like heck that was only four minutes whoo so the point is they're close in proximity they're similar but they're also really e even just in that short amount of space the context is different the the the, the so yeah so our official vision statement is that we create community over great beverages and food. Um, we just kind of stumbled upon that because we realized that's what we were doing. And so the, the title of this talk actually was given by Jeremy, and there were one of two options. We never actually named this, so I'm gonna tell you what he gave us, which I just love. Um, oh, here we go. So building a better city through business or cultivating a city and a community and I, I just love both titles because one, it's like, wow, Jeremy, you know us, because that's exactly what we're trying to do. And so we, when we say our, our vision statement is to create community, there are two ways we think about it. Yeah, two ways Russ and I think about it. And the first one is that uh, we create community because the business itself is a place where we're creating community. And so um, that's the first one. Then the second one is also the business is a way we leverage to build community in a kind of a more macro um, level. And I, we'll, we'll talk about both. So the first one, the business itself, is a place where we create community. So if you, how many of you guys have heard of the, have heard or read of the book, um, The Great Good Place? Okay, it's a guy uh, by the name of Ray Oldenburg, and if you've ever heard of the term third place, he's the guy that invented that term. And so he speaks about third places as kind of the, the next wave of, um, of where America's moving in terms of where we need to be as a society and community. And he pushes this idea of a third place because that's where community is really formed and community is really um, built. And he actually 
calls it the grassroots of democracy because when when people meet at thir third places, conversations happen and actually ideas and movements begin at these public places. And so one of the a few of the characteristics of third places that he names as um, the neutral ground, in a sense that people can come and go as they please. The societal levelers, that means it doesn't matter um, whether you're the mayor or you're homeless. You know, people are all welcome as long, for Russ and I, as long as they they're respectful of others. Another characteristic, as I've mentioned, is conversation is a main activity. So people are talking and the conversations are happy, playful, and also ideas are being birthed out of that. Another characteristics are it has the regulars. So the people that come in on a regular basis actually help form the community and help welcome new people. Another characteristic is um, it's a home away from home. And we've heard that from a number of customers. So. Um, that is what we do in trying to create community in the actual place. Um, so the way that ties in practically with, with what we're doing in intentionality and design is that we're trying to create places that, that with the products that we have there and with the environment, it is both um, explicitly and subtly suggesting this is the kind of place that works for all those things to happen. So one of the unique things about the Goose business model and now Good Neighbors, it, again, is that with the product base that we have, with the kind of spaces we've created, what we're attempting to do is create a space where there literally is not a time in the day that it doesn't make sense to be there, right? So if you think about that compared to a traditional restaurant where you know maybe they're opening uh, at 11 o'clock for lunch and then they have their little their, their lunch rush, and then maybe around two or three o'clock, they're kind of back in prep mode again. Maybe there's one or two people in there, um, and then it kind of starts to heat up again around happy hour and later. W what we wanted to do is create a space where at two o'clock, you think that's, it makes sense for me to be at this place at two o'clock. So you think about Starbucks, which is sort of the, as far as big national companies, sort of the poster child for third places, right? They get it, they've always gotten it, they've always understood that's their mission. Starbucks mission is not coffee. Starbucks mission is being that third space for people. Um, and, even, and they're now getting into the wine and, and business too because they realize that, that they need to do that to, to fulfill that mission. But, um, you know, you, the, the coffee shop model in itself draws that three o'clock person. It draws that 10 o'clock person. The restaurant draws the lunch and dinner person. If they do breakfast, it draws the breakfast person. The bar draws the happy hour and late night person. So we, we try to create something that, that pulls all of that in, and that has its challenges, right? For a kitchen and for a staff, there's, there's not, there's very little, oh, this is the time when we relax and catch up. So the, the, we've learned how to run this model and how to staff for it over time, and we still have uh, ground we can cover there, but it's, it, it's so important and vital for us to create the type of product mix and then the type of vibe in the space that invites that all day long, anytime, this is a great place to meet. Um, and that's the first thing. And secondly, oh, we'll get some coffee while we're here, or maybe we'll get a beer while we're here, depending on the type of day, time of day. But it's, it's about primarily that connection in that moment. That's what we're trying to do. And hopefully what you see and, and notice when you come to our place is the intentionality of the space, like the community table. Um, so one of the best compliments is hearing that people stumble upon each other's conversation and then things emerge from their relationships are formed, you know, collaboration of, of, of ideas and pursuits are emerge. So we, the place intentionally is also designed to foster that kind of community atmosphere. So that's the first one. And the second one is um, we're also using the, our businesses strategically as a way to leverage community from a kind of a more macro view of the city. And let me explain a couple of, couple of ways we do that. One is when we first moved to the neighborhood on Tejon, um, we knew there wasn't a whole lot going there. We had a couple of awesome neighbors, Poor Richard and Rasta Pasta. But our hope was that our presence will also help ignite other things in the area. And um, I, I always say one of our greatest joys was when you know, Lee Spirits came by and Odyssey and all the other business started to emerge because ultimately what we want are friends and neighbors and 
we don't see them as competitors. We, we're trying to develop a whole neighborhood in that side of Tejon. And um, someday, hopefully we will, we keep talking about branding it, that pocket of the city. We keep talking about having a, a fall block party where we close the streets and do something fun with all the businesses. And so um, that's one example. Another example um, that Russ and I use as a way to create community from a macro view is that in, in some ways, um, unexpectedly, the Wild Goose has given us um, a level of visibility and platform, and we've, we've leveraged that to, to get involved great, greater in the city, to sit on boards and to be a part of conversation and, and to, um, to get our voice in and help shape in the larger community. And so I've really enjoyed that process of being invited to spaces that otherwise I wouldn't have been invited to. And Russ is gonna talk about one very particular uh, downtown business board. So um, along those lines, and, and frankly, that's been one of the biggest surprises, I think, of new business ownership like this is that open door to be more involved in the community in the city. I mean, we, we both had it as a big part of our mission with our business to be community builders, but it just, I just hadn't connected the dots that what that would mean would not be, just be doing that directly through our business, but that it would open doors for us to sit on the boards at the Y, and I sit on the, and multiple things. Yimmy's involved with, with several things, Copper, uh, and, and I'm on the Business Improvement District Board, which is really fun because that's, you know, uh, literally focused on the downtown, on the Tejon Strip, um, and it's doing kind of what I love to do, which is talking about how do we make the experience and the environment of this street all it can be um, and, and be the best it can be. So that has been something that was probably should have been expected, but we didn't expect it. Um, and but it's such uh, part of the sweet spot. And now Yimmy is uh, maybe perhaps most of you know is working for the chamber now, and that's a door that's opened up for that. And and as you can you know hopefully get the sense of you know we um, our drive for our businesses. I don't think we've opened our last business. I think we're going to do more work and more really cool things, hopefully. But it's all centered around that idea of business development, community development, economic development for this city, for this place. We are um, we are we are we're place motivated entrepreneurs. That, that that's what we do. You know, if someone comes to us and says, hey, it's time to open up one of these in Denver, it's not like that's completely off the table, but gosh, that would be a big leap for us because we're not about Denver. I think that's happened. We oh it has happened, yeah. <laughs> and we haven't done it. Um, because uh, right now at least this is what we're all about. And and part of why Good Neighbors was such a a fun opportunity for us and just a no-brainer when it literally fell in our laps was we both live in that neighborhood. It's just, you know, it, 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 it's taking what we're all about even to a, to a more obvious and, and, and clear level. So um, should I talk about the video and do that? So we're going to end with this. Uh, some of you have seen this before, I'm sure, but it just does such a great job of, I think, capturing who we are and what we do. It's the video that, um, that uh, Jeff um, did a great job of creating for us, Jeff Arnold, um, on our one-year anniversary, and we still use it. We use it with all our staff and our training because it just really hits what we're all about. We're going to end with that and then open it for Q&A, which is kind of, we're probably best at that, it, it actually answering questions than trying to come up with an agenda ourselves. So um, we'll do that, and then, uh, and then I think open it for Q&A, if that's cool. Does that work? So what is it, what do I do? Good morning. The meeting house is our new way of saying public house. So most of us um, are familiar with the term pub, pub house, you know, that's a term we borrowed from Ireland and in the US it typically means a bar, but the deeper meaning of a pub house is a public space where the community can come together. And so we were trying to uh, recreate th that sort of experience in, in our city. The dream was, what if we created this kind of space? At the core of what Russ and I are trying to do in Colorado Springs is to build community. Great wine and good beer and, and food and, and all of these things, these craft beverages that we do, 
culturally are, you know, really always best enjoyed in the context of community and people. I moved here uh, two years ago after living 14 years in Verona, Italy. And one of the things that I learned from Italy was that life is really good when you enjoy it around a table together with people that you care about, whether it's family or friends. And so this has been a haven for me and it's becoming that more and more. So it started with the idea and the dream and then it started with what, what does a place like that look like? We had an architect who had lived in Portland, so he right away knew the kind of experience we're trying to create. So he, in a sense, created uh, the design and experience was mimic something you find in a progressive city. And then you start to figure out, well, there's just a lot of things that I don't know that I need to know to do this. So I started trying to find people that knew the answers to the questions that I had. Uh, now, our space was a former print shop. So we didn't have the plumbing, we didn't have the electric, we didn't have any of that for us. So I, I reached out to about 20 buddies and they came and we did some demo work and that was a, that was a, that was a fun day. We just believed in Russ and Yemi's vision for the Goose so much that we wanted to roll our sleeves up and help in any way that we could. And so whether that was brainstorming the menu beforehand or when it came time to prepare the space for the Goose, uh, doing the demo for that, um, we wanted to do that. What's beautiful about that is it, it was already a reflection of the heartbeat and the dream of what we wanted to create. Before we even opened, we were already seeing those kind of relationships and that kind of community make an impact on, on the wild goose. So we've had these brown paper recovering the windows for a good four, four or five months. I remember the day we got to a place where finally we were able to open it and we just took down the brown paper. It was kind of like taking your clothes off. I mean, it, it was a scary feeling. And now we could see the mountains, we could see the city. It wasn't just this enclosed place. And my favorite thing was for the next two months, people would walk by. What was <laughs> that? The process of getting open was exhilarating, infuriating, all at once. I mean, when you do something like this you've never done before, you don't, you don't even know what to expect. So the goose moved from Russ and my baby to this community place. <laughs> You know, there's, there are places that you walk into that you instantly feel at home when you walk in the front door. And the Goose is one of those places that you, you just feel like, this is a really nice place. Being an owner of a co-working space, there's no place I'd rather be than on the same block as the Wild Goose. I love the Goose because I feel connected to the larger Colorado Springs community. I'm from Colorado College and there's a bubble around our community and the Goose definitely breaks that barrier. I just love that I feel so comfortable here. I have a home office, but it always feels cold and lonely, and I come here and I love the people, I love the coffee, and it's just my first place always to come. Happy anniversary, Wild Goose! You always hold a special place in my heart. I love it. Happy anniversary. Keep going. It's freaking awesome. Happy anniversary, Wild Goose, from Daisy in Austin, Texas. Happy anniversary, Wild Goose. Woo! Hey, hey wild, wild Goose. Y'all are our favorite place to play in Colorado Springs. We're looking forward to seeing y'all again. Happy, Happy anniversary. anniversary from Dawn and Hogs. Happy anniversary, Wild Goose. I love you. Happy anniversary. I love that we opened up the day after Thanksgiving. It's so perfect because I think every time we get to this place, this anniversary mark, the theme is gonna be thank you. Thank you to the community. Thank you for all the people that make the goose what it is. It's because of you guys that the goose is alive, the goose is flying, and you guys help make this idea possible. So 
from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. Thank you for being ambassadors. Thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting our third space. Thank you for telling others and much, much gratitude. This is so early to think, Jeff. <laughs>